I'm grateful to address this question because I know without a doubt from many watching this video, this is not just a question. This is your story. I am also grateful to address this because we all need to learn how to better walk with people who have been victims of sexual abuse. So I want this to be helpful for survivors, but I also hope that it's helpful for the church to better understand how to care for those who are asking this difficult question. Before we go any further, it is important to know what we're actually talking about when we say sexual abuse and recognize that it can happen to both children and adults. So here's one way to describe it. Sexual abuse is any unwanted sexual activity that is demanded, coerced, or engaged in without consent or through manipulation. This for sure includes physical interactions, including rape, but it can also be verbal, such as sexual threats, degrading and hurtful innuendos or comments. It can also be visual, such as forced exposure to pornography or forced exposure to sexual activity. It can also include exploitive acts and voyeurism. Just hearing that description, you can see that this is a subject that deserves far more time than we will have in this brief video. So in light of that, be sure to check the resources at the end that'll be linked. But let me take a moment to respond to this really important question. How do I heal from sexual abuse? First off, healing isn't forgetting your painful past as if nothing ever happened, though many wish that they could make it all go away. What might surprise you is that healing often begins not when the awful event is avoided, ignored, or suppressed, but when you courageously look at that horrible situation, that thing that can never be erased, and recognize it as a real wrong done. Your acknowledgement of what happened is one step towards healing. Not only can healing begin by recognizing the story of abuse, healing can come by giving voice to that story. Even if it's only between you and one other person, abuse silences its victims and as a result, they are left to suffer alone. Victims know all too well the mental dialogue that plays out in their heads, that trap of confusion and shame leading you to believe a twisted version of what happened to you. Condemning thoughts of what you could have done, lies that say it was your fault, Accusations of why you deserve what happened to you are so common, since that's actually what your abuser told you. Telling your story to a safe and trusted friend is a significant step on the path of healing. Healing comes in remembering, remembering fully and with new clarity. So processing the abuse with a trusted friend or a counselor helps to alleviate some of the suffering. This often requires the help of, of, and compassion of someone who has a different vantage point than you. Someone you can talk with to sort out some of the, of the events, um, to help you see more clearly the evil of the situation, and to help you gain some new and maybe more accurate perspective of your past. So on that note, it's important when telling your story to not only share what happened, but how you felt. Speaking the facts is one thing. Sharing the internal experience of what it was actually like is another. Healing insists that the emotional pain is accessed and processed. So in light of that, obviously connection and relationship are core components of this step. So finding safe people who will see your pain and handle it with care and affirm that it matters are vital to your healing. 
This can start with a trusted friend or mentor, someone who has proven that they love you and care for you, someone who is for you, but can also challenge your thinking in a loving way that encourages you towards wholeness. Often professional counseling, um, people who know how to walk with survivors of sexual abuse are needed to help you step out of the paralyzing shame and into what is true. So please though, keep this in mind. This is really important. This takes time and that's okay. Another important thing to do is to take care of you. The more a person is exposed to any kind of suffering or struggle, the more self-care and a healthy, balanced life are needed. So take care of your health. If you've been a victim of abuse, it can actually feel wrong to take care of yourself. It can feel wrong to have needs, but that is not true. Be attentive to your health, your physical health for sure, but your emotional and mental well-being as well. To do this, consider this. What makes your heart come alive? What do you find beautiful? Prioritize that. Be outside, take in nature, music, art, cooking, or animals. I think you get the picture. Pursue beauty every day, but also make time to rest and eat healthy foods that give your body energy and strength and drink water. Um, find a physical activity that you enjoy, even if it's just taking a walk. These things all contribute to the journey of healing. But finally, and I know that this can actually be very hard, but attend to your spiritual health. Just as abuse can skew your view of yourself, your past, it can also skew your view of God. So lean on others if this is hard. You have scars, but that doesn't mean that you are damaged goods. You have scars, but you are not alone. You also have a Savior who has scars. He knows what it means to be exposed, naked, ridiculed, and exploited. His scars tell you that he understands your woundedness, but his scars also tell you that there is healing. Look to the cross for your healing and find a loving and understanding Redeemer who died to make you new. Look to the cross for justice and see a secure future where every evil is dealt with and eradicated. Hold on to Jesus. He's holding on to you. You are his beloved son or daughter, and nothing that you have done or nothing that has happened to you can ever change his love for you. Let me just end by reading this passage, and I would love it if you would just really listen, maybe close your eyes for a moment, and just hear these words. This is the word of God for you. This is Psalm 18, verses 16 and 19. He sent from on high, and he took me. He drew me out of many waters. He rescued me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place and rescued me because he delighted in me. And 1 Peter 1, 5 verse 10 says this, God shows his undeserved kindness to everyone, and that is why he appointed Christ Jesus to choose you, to share in his eternal glory. You will suffer for a while, but God will make you complete, steady, strong, and firm.